This week on Crossfeed. Illegal street preaching. Sacrificial anesthesia. Fired from Walmart. Soldier scarves. Baptist baby cribs. And a follow-up. Everybody. It's good to see you all. Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. Welcome to this week's edition of Crossfade News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridge, Ohio. Welcome, everybody. So, uh, see, I did the I did the welcoming for a change. Usually, that's Dale's job, but I did it today. <laughs> so today is a very special day for me. It was six years ago today. April 10th, that I was installed as pastor of St. Luke's in Dedham. Cool. As I reminded my people, six down, 19 more to go. <laughs> Is that when you're retiring? Uh, I'm going to read, God willing, and the creek don't rise, I'm going to retire when I'm 70. Dude, you're but, old. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> 51, so, um, you know, I don't know. I may not make it to 50. I may not make it to 70. I just may make it to 65, but, uh, you know, my, my goal is I really don't want to retire before 70. Now, I, it's funny. I'm reading this stuff in the paper about, uh, you know, they're wanting to raise the age of uh, Social Security and Medicare to 67, and these people are objecting to it. I mean, two years. I'm like, dude, you know. Our life expectancy is 85, you know. I mean, you know, when Social Security was started, you know, you weren't expected to collect, you know. The age was 65 and death was six, was 64 for men. Um, so, you know, so, you know, you know, come on, if you're young and you, if you're healthy, I know a lot of retirees that continue working. I got a member of my church and she was a school teacher and she retired and couldn't stay in retirement. So she went back to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, uh Lifespans have extended so much. It wasn't really designed for our lifespans. It's one of the problems we're having. So, uh, that I felt good. we keep killing the babies that would be paying into it, but that's a whole nother issue. Well, there's that issue. And the fact we do, so we've already spent the money, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that too. So you spend that money, then you can say the budget's balanced. <laughs> that's right. But uh, anyway, so go ahead, Dale. What, what's been going on with you? Oh, so much. You know what? Here, I I can I'll I'll just say this that um you know, we what was it? A couple months ago, I guess, um or a month ago, uh that we adopted the transforming congregations and and really turned our focus outward. Um we haven't really started on anything yet. It's it's we're still kind of in the preliminary planning stages and things. But um We've had a a marked increase in visitors um, just over the past few weeks, just sort of ever since that started. And um, it's an awful coincidence, uh, and I and I don't think it's a coincidence. Uh, you know, the the irony is is that we are doing one outreach thing uh, to new movers, uh, people that just moved into the area, mm -hmm. and nobody has responded to that. But we do have all kinds of other people that have just shown up, so you know, for various reasons. Sometimes just sort of for that they they're not even sure why that they just decided that to come back to church or, or whatever. And and um, so I, I'm looking at it, and 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 my only explanation is that God is saying, "All right, well, if you're interested in um, in reaching the lost, then you know, uh, now we're talking." You know, let's keep yep. going on that. And, and just, you know, and, uh, I'll bring some people, uh, to you so that you realize that it's not because of your own efforts or your marketing strategies or, or anything like that. It's because I'm God and that's what I do. And, uh, you know, so that we don't get, uh, sort of big headed about it and say, wow, aren't we great? And aren't we brilliant in our strategies and, and things like that? Yeah. Well, they, up here, they have a, um, the, um, Catholic Church is doing a big marketing campaign during Lent called Catholics Come Home. 
and they're putting on these weepy uh, ads and stuff. And apparently it's working. And apparently it's touching some people and things to returning them to the Catholic Church. And they're, they're really rather, rather done ads, well done ads. I thought they must have gotten the same company that does the Mormon ads because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're well done. And anyway, so the guy says, uh, so, uh, so I figured, you know, you must be doing an ad campaign. Lutherans come home. Uh, <laughs> Um, let's do our follow-up story first. Let's, uh, okay. you want to touch on this just real quickly. And, uh, it's, uh, good to see this. I, I thought that's interesting. Well, a couple years ago or a while back, I can't remember when, uh, we talked about this, uh, Illinois, uh, law. Actually, it's not a law. It's a rule that was imposed by, uh, uh, Rod Blagojevich. Um, maybe they need to see how much money he was offered to impose this rule. Anyway, it said that, uh, 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 Good hair, Governor. I like it. Anyway, so uh, he uh, put a rule that saying all that said all Illinois pharmacists had to dispense the morning after pill, and <coughs> some pharmacists said, "Hey, I've got religious issues against this. This is, in my mind, a a uh, form of abortion because uh, it's uh, after conception and uh, uh, you know removes the uh, fertilized uh, egg and everything." And I, I, I just can't do this. I, and they uh, threatened to take their license and stuff. And so anyhow, they sued. And uh, it was thrown out of court. Didn't even the court didn't even didn't even consider the the argument. They just dismissed the suit and went all the way to the Supreme Court of Illinois. And at least Illinois Supreme Court said, yes, you do have to consider it. You know, they've got a very good issue here. We have a right to conscience law. Of course you have to deal with the right to conscience law. Right. And so they sent it back to circuit court, which found in their favor. Wow, isn't that interesting? Isn't that an exception to what usually happens? You know, I found it interesting that, no, that, you know, I, on the first thing, oh, there's not even a case here. We're throwing it out. Second, oh, well, maybe there is. <laughs> uh, yeah. And my, my question I would ask is, since when does a rule by the... Um, Administration, which may or may, which can change with any administration. Mm -hmm. uh, executive orders can change. Trump, uh, a law passed by the uh, legislature. Or do you take pride in being an insufferable know it all? Well, we probably shouldn't talk about Libya then, huh? <laughs> um, but, uh,. Yeah, so this is this is really good news because this kind of thing's been happening. This this whole um, sort of conscience thing, and um, you know, when you got pharmacists that are being threatened, that that are being forced to, you know, well, you can either stay in business or you can um, you can go with your conscience, take a pick, and um, you know, to actually rule to say no, you have the right of of conscience and, and, you know, because we've, we've talked about uh, adoption, for instance, where adoption agencies are not given the right of conscience. Um, so, so anyway, this is, this is some good news. And, it was. Um, so real happy to see this. Oh, well, we might as well go ahead and deal with another court case that was upheld only this time down in New Orleans. Uh, wait, which one was that? Oh, this Bethel is Bethel versus City of Mobile. All right, yeah. All right. Uh, now, in this case, it was arguably upheld against the uh, uh, religious uh, rights, but you have to understand what was going on. Now, this is this is really interesting, and and you sort of have to think about. Um, the Westboro Baptist Church and the recent rulings on that when you think about this. All right. So this was at a, a Mardi Gras um, parade. And in Alabama. You know, it's going to be a wild party in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Mardi Gras. I think Alabama. <laughs> All right. So um, Orlando Bethel, along with his wife and three children, attended the um, Mobile Mardi Gras parade in order to evangelize their religious beliefs. They carried signs with messages such as, God hates you wicked baby-killing whores, repent. Um, <laughs> the, the religious news service blog that, that where I got the link from this said, apparently God hates commas too. 
<laughs> but uh, so the woman attending the parade complained to police officers that Bethel had shouted at her 13-year-old daughter, who was sitting on her boyfriend's lap, calling her a whore and a prostitute. Uh, police took Bethel and his family into custody and seized their signs. And uh, so they said that it was these were fighting words and not just um, this wasn't a First Amendment uh, equal protection sort of thing. Um, this and, is a federal district court. They may wind up appealing it to the full circuit court or something like that, which could, could, could go against it. Um, okay, I, I do have to wonder about a woman. She has a 13-year-old daughter who has a boyfriend, and she's sitting on the boyfriend's lap, okay? You know, I do have to wonder about, you know, mom here. This is not a healthy thing. But be well, that as it may. Wait, or was the, wait, was this a daughter who was sitting? Okay, see, I wasn't sure what the, the her was referring. Was it that her 13-year-old daughter was sitting on mom's boyfriend's lap? So her sort of father figure's lap? Or was she sitting on her sort of 13-year-old boyfriend's lap? <laughs> I thought 13-year-old boyfriend. I thought her referred to the daughter this time. I guess the antecedent. grammatically, yeah, that would have to be the antecedent. So You know. Um, e- either otherwise, way, I'm sure... it would still be kind of creepy. Yeah, either, <laughs> either way it is. But anyhow, <laughs> I mean, okay. You know, oh my gosh. You know, maybe it's just me. But if I'm going to evangelize, this is not my way of doing evangelism. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to defeat the purpose. You, 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 so St. Luke's is abandoning the whole you whores and prostitutes um, approach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you wicked baby killing whores repent. Uh, no, we, that's just not one of my... Uh, they're, they're not doing that one anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> um, you know, that's um, that was not a transforming church's recommendation for our church. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, in all reality, seriously, what are they? What kind of? I mean, yeah, I, I, you come up and yelling something like that at my daughter, I'm going to punch you. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's just that's just. That's just it. I mean, yeah, that is a that this is not a free speech thing. This is a fight. Now, if you no, okay, if they were standing up on the the side, you know, just raising the sign, that would be one thing. I mean, okay, then you know, you're being peaceful. You're you know, parading around with your sign, and people are looking at you, you're going jerk. But if you um, you know, are 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 shouting this at a 13 year old kid, <laughs> those kids are driving me crazy, and you're an adult. Mm-hmm. Then no, that's that's harassment, and it does hurt. You deserve, you know, got exactly yeah. what she, she, they deserve, as far as I'm concerned. Right, you know, and especially the the fact that it was a kid. All right, because then you're you know you're looking at this is an issue of the adult has has more power in that situation. So then it, it really becomes a, a a harassment issue, and 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 you know could be considered probably abuse or you know all kinds of. Of things. Well, it could only be abuse if it was their parent. But uh, yeah, that's true. But, but, I mean, what the... That funny man over there, don't just ignore him. But still, I mean, you're, it, it's, no, I could actually, no, I could see some parent going, either shut your mouth or I'm going to punch, or I'm going to shut up for you. Don't stop calling my, stop talking to my kid that way. Mm-hmm. All right. But if somebody started talking, screaming at my wife like that, you know, I, Either way, I mean, but yeah, it's in, in this case, you know, because the fighting words is, is a, you know, First Amendment exception mm-hmm. um, and uh, it legally held. And this is the case where, yeah, I, I mean, I can see somebody you're yelling this at my kid. Um, you know, you're not just yelling at the crowd. You're just not doing the sign. No, you're yelling it specifically at my kid. Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. You know, I mean, the, the, I can see, you know, the threat in there. I can see it, it, it instigating a fighting. See, and, and, then, and I imagine they were probably sort of fueled by the recent uh, Westboro ruling where they were allowed to protest at funerals. And, and that, but, all right, here's the difference. The Westboro people, they keep it, while they're kind of specific, at the same time, they're kind of not. You know, the, on the one hand, they'll they'll be like, you know, 
thank God for dead Boy Scouts or something like that. That's it's general, All right? Um, whereas with with this, they're sort of singling people out, All right? And they do they are kept at a certain distance. I mean, the, the one case where it did come out, we talked about a couple weeks ago. The guy did the, the father didn't even know they were there until he watched the news that night. You know, and so, you know, you could argue in that case, well, the, the, you know, Harley, you know, hurt the guy because he didn't even know about it until he watched the news. Right. You know, uh, and it came after the fact. Uh, here, the guy's right in his face. So, uh, or right in his family's face. So, can, can I go to these people and, and, you know, carry a sign that says, uh, God hates those who don't love their neighbor as themselves? <laughs> themselves? <laughs> How about just the. God. Now, how about a sign that says, you know, just thank God that he loves stupid people. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking of harassing and weird ways of, well, I don't know. Now, this is, this one's, uh, this is a weird article. This is from a gay blog. Um, and, um, uh, Ed, you know, and anyway, so it's, yeah, it's, it's from Edge, uh, Chicago, um, this is so. Um, there was a uh, Walmart in uh, uh, Joliet, Illinois, uh, and a bunch of people got into a discussion on um, homosexuality. So this is like an after-hours, like stocking people. This wasn't like in front of employees or anything like that. Right. These yeah, this is the overnight in front of customers. So, yeah, and there was a woman there called. Uh, Tanisha Matthews, who was an apostolic Christian, um, and she worked as a stalker. And one night during a break, Matthews and several co-workers got into an argument about whether or not gays are destined to go to hell. And um, the next day, an employee informed the manager that Matthew had made inappropriate comments about gays to a gay employee named Amy. Um, and the investigation by Walmart showed that, uh, uh, so that Matthew was screaming, Matthews was screaming that God does not accept gays. They should not be on earth and they'll go to hell because they are not right in the head. Five other employees confirmed that Matthews had said gays are sinners and are going to hell. And so Matthews was fired for violating the retail chain's non-harassment policy. Under the um, the pot calling the kettle black um, <laughs> uh, clause, being not right in the head. Um, <laughs> all right, you know. It's, so so here's the difference. It, it's one thing to say, you know, since you asked what I believe, since we're having this conversation, all right, this is what I believe. Which I I don't believe that um, that being gay means that you're automatically going to hell. All right. Because I sin too, and I believe that Jesus died for me, and I believe that Jesus died for anybody that's gay too. Mm -hmm. um, you can get into the whole issue of unrepentant sin, you know, that that's a whole other issue. Um, well, I would argue that, you know, if somebody said, are people going to hell because they are gay? I would say, well, they're going to hell because they are sinners. Right. It doesn't matter the sin. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, do you think homosexuality is sinful? Well, yes, I do. But that's not why they're going to hell. They're going to hell because they you take that out of the equation, they still got plenty of stuff. So, Right, right. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, yeah. a matter of fact, so do I. So, right. um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, the fact that, that she was like screaming at her and, um, you know, telling her you should not be on earth and um, you, you're not right in the head. And yeah, I mean, See, this is another case where it, it turns into harassment. Right. Well, it said that, you know, you know, yeah, um, Amy, you know, again, Amy said this was going on. You know, it says the five other employees confirmed that Matthew just said gays are sinners and going to hell. Um, you know, so I would, my question is with that, you know, did, you know, I wish the, it said the other employees confirmed that she was, you know, has, was screaming because sometimes, you know, now, am I talking loud as you're screaming or something like that? Uh, you know, uh, um, did she say they're not right in the head? Um, 
I mean, they, they, you know, they didn't say the other employees confirmed that fact. I noticed that, and th- and that was kind of interesting. So there's yeah. a little bit of a sort of he said, she said on this one. Yeah, there could have been. Um, although, isn't you know, again, you don't know. I mean, this is this is a gay blog, so you don't know uh, what what's there, what's not there, because uh, it says uh, you know she depicted her termination as a violation of anti-Christian perse- persecution, and um, you know that according to the 1964 Civil Rights Act, you can't be discriminated the balance of your basis of your faith. Um, you know, so it would, be, it would help to know exactly what she said. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Because, I mean, obviously, uh, this um, there's going to be a bias here. Yeah, right. I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're factually inaccurate. I'm just saying there's going to be a bias, and you have to take bias into account and, you know, right. and say, well, it's important to get both sides of the story, and we don't have the other side. Right, yeah. And, and so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, just... If nothing else, and I, I don't know as I was reading this thing, talk about, you know, unessential issues coming up in this thing. So it's talking about all this and stuff. And then all of a sudden, it goes into this whole class action lawsuit on female employers. I mean, female employees in Walmart. And uh, uh, then conservatives expect that the Supreme Court will find for Walmart in the case as well. Anti-gay religious website One News Now reported in the April 4th article that Pacific Institute Justice Attorney Kevin Snyder predicted yada, yada, yada. Um, and then it gets into, what's that have to do with the story? What is the fact that there's a quote, I mean, oh, that, 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 that it was on a, found on a, quote, anti-gay religious website? And One News Now um, if I remember right, not that it's a site that I frequent, but I think it's more, it, it's sort of like a, yeah, sort of like a Fox News, but a little further to the right, you know? Yeah, but um, I mean, it, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, none of that has anything to do with the case. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, <laughs> it was, it was like, we need to make this article longer. Well, let's talk yeah. about something that's sort of only remotely related, that, but it's just on the same topic. And, and so like, it's, it's like two stories. Let's. Well, I, it is. It, 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 no, it's not even, it's, it's, it's not even remotely related. I mean, one is a, you know, a woman suing because of a, you know, harassment issue. And the other one has to do with women saying that they weren't, um, uh, promoted in equal numbers to men uh, as managers. Um, and I do fully expect the Supreme Court to throw it out for a very, for various reasons, uh, not least of which there's just, you know, it's just, it, it, it would just be a, a, a crazy situation to bring something like that up to a class action status. Um, but I mean, still, it has nothing, nothing the thing is, um, uh, edge. If you're going to really be edge, you might want to get rid of the, old Walmart, uh, how may I help you, um, things. They haven't, uh, worn those in uh, like three or four years now, <laughs> you know, for some place we can go, Hey, we're, we're, we're on the edge. You're really behind the time in your pictures, you know, just little oh, you hint know, there. They probably checked, uh, 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 Flickr, you know, for an image to use and yeah, it's stock images, but no, it's uh, uh, again. I mean, look, there is a right way and a wrong way to share God's word. This is the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it, you can say, hey, since you asked my opinion, this is what I'm thinking. But you know, I mean, again, how are we going to touch people if we're, you know, coming very negatively to them? Right. You know, this is something that I've I've said it before on here. Um, that uh, and it's not original to me; it's original to a member of my former congregation. Um, and that is, don't be surprised when the act or when the lost act like they're lost. Right. Or uh, when the world acts like the world. Right. And so, um, you know, if. If somebody is not a Christian, you can't expect them to act like a Christian. That's right. right. You can't say you shouldn't be gay, all right, unless the person has a reason not to be, 
or, you know, and, and it's a little more complicated than that, but you know, the, the fact that why would the person even care what you think about it unless they know the savior that gives freedom? Right. So let's, I don't, people just Christians. All right. Wake up. <laughs> all right. This is, it's like if you get upset about how somebody, um, you know, people's attitude toward churches. I, this is something that, that, um, happened to me, uh, that's happening to me this week. Uh, we've got our Wednesday night, uh, Lent service. Um, my elders are filling in, covering for me so that I can go to, uh, um, to the concert at school. All right. My elders are awesome. And I really appreciate mm-hmm. them and, and, um, the congregation being understanding about that, um, that they offered to do that for me. But, um, here's the thing. I mean, back, well, even back when I was in Iowa, you didn't do stuff like that on Wednesday nights, especially during Lent. Right. Um, but nowadays you got, you know, soccer leagues on Sunday mornings. You know, that was unheard of not that long ago. Right. But we live in a different world now and <laughs> you can complain up and down about, um, how, well, that's, you shouldn't do that because we have church and, and all this kind of stuff. Like, okay, but if that's not important to them, then we can't sit there and, and complain and expect the society to sort of bow to our preferences. Right. You know, we don't, um, we don't just automatically give all Jews and Seventh day Adventists off, um, on Saturdays. Which, by the way, that was another story that we're not not doing tonight about um, uh, Seventh Day Adventists and the uh, postal service trying to get off, and he said, "Nope, sorry." <laughs> Just write to your congressman, tell him we don't want no more postal deli- Saturday deliveries. Uh, you know, I'll <laughs> take care of that real quick. Um, okay, well, let's go to the other side then, and how much um, leeway should you give? How much respect should you show? And let's deal with the uh, female. Um, soldiers in uh, Afghanistan. Okay. Uh, now, I you know that this this is, I think this is a okay. So, the Department of Defense has a policy of encouraging female soldiers who are in Afghanistan or probably and I don't know I don't think Iraq. I'd have to ask Josh. He, he could probably tell me. Um, of wearing um, headscarves there. Uh, now, it's interesting because of the, again, it, it, as an accommodation to the Muslim culture, uh, they do not um, <clears throat> allow the women to deal with men. They only deal with other women. And they just find it makes a lot easier for women, um, you know, to do that work by wearing a headscarf when they do it. Um, and I don't know how I feel, but I don't know. I'm sure what I think about this. Part of me says it's a good thing. The other part of me says, um, you know, part of me says, when in Rome, doing the, what the Romans do. The other part of me says, uh, we're over there defending you. Uh, we are not Afghanistan's. We are not Muslims. You're going to have to learn to be understand that we're not Afghanistan's, we're not Muslims, and therefore we're not bound by your rules. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I thought about this, and um, my gut reaction uh, to this is uh, it's sort of more on the lines of when in Rome, and, and let me explain why. To them, a woman walking around without her head covered is immoral. It's it's the equivalent, you know, f- for us it would have to be the equivalent of a woman walking around the streets in her underwear or topless or something. And um you know, and and so you know, they're they're seeing these women walking around without their heads covered and they're going, "Oh, those hussies, you know. Um they're tempting our men and, you know, and and, and stuff like that because <laughs> to them, oh, a woman without her head covered Ooh. <laughs> you know, I mean, to us it, it seems ridiculous, but to them, it, it, you know, you have to sort of consider where they're at as far as what coverage they're used to. You know, even 
Uh, you know, I mean, th- think about if the if the guys decided they wanted to be like the um, like the junior high and high school kids nowadays that like to walk around with their pants halfway down. I mean, it's a bad idea if you're going into combat, but you know, um, if if they decided that they wanted to to dress like that, I mean, that would be well, that'd be offensive to me, but you know, it, that would be a problem too. Now, on the other hand, there is this um, point made here about um, where the uh, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Lawhorn, spokesman for the U.S. Central Command, said service women are definitely not being ordered to wear head scarves. Um, he said that women can wear the scarves under their helmets and that it's unrealistic that any commander would trade the safety of any service member under their command for cultural consideration. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, there's this whole helmet issue. Um, right. They are, yeah, it is. It, uh, an admiral um, said the women, female service members, do so as a personal choice. They feel this gesture helps them in accomplishing their mission by serving as a sign of courtesy and respect toward the locals. Hmm. Yep. They also tell uh, them to take off their sunglasses and gloves when they greet a civilian. That's part right. of their culture. However, there's a retired U.S. Air Force colonel. Uh, named Martha McSally, who was uh, America's first female, one of America's first female pilots, and she said it's inappropriate. She says um, the, that culture, women are considered to be second-class citizens, and uh, service women will be viewed as second-class citizens, second-class warriors, uh, if they have to uh, take up the those customs. Um, they're going to be seen like that anyway, to to the Afghan people, no matter whether they're wearing the scarf or not, I don't think you're going to change that by you know. Then they're just going to go. Well, they're not only are they second class warriors, they're immoral. <laughs> See, now she was in a situation when she was in Saudi Arabia uh, before, um, and uh, their female service members were ordered to wear an abaya, a b a y a a long black gown and a headscarf. And she sued the military and the Congress forced the Department, Defense Department to get rid of the rule. Um, absolutely, they should not have that rule. Mm-hmm. You are a U.S. service member. You should be dressed in the U.S. service member's uh, uniform. Or we should just simply say women are not going to serve in Muslim countries, period. Right. Yeah, but this is totally voluntary. And- right. And I would say that as long as it's voluntary and as long as they're not like pressured, like, well, it's voluntary, but if you're serving under my command, you, you know, you know, that they really, truly, you know, we think this would be a great idea, but if, if it's not something that you're comfortable doing or whatever, fine. But, you know, I think as, as long as they're not pressured into doing it and it's just a suggestion, um, you know, with, with the soldiers, you know, they, they want to, um, they want to have good relationships with the locals that they're trying to help and stuff, and they're saying, you know, this is something that would help that. Right. Um, um, and just as a, uh, you know, I mean, the, I mean, you know, from the rabble rousing and the killing that Thor took place over there in the local village, we know that, you know, I hate to say it, but these Afghans are a little bit touchy anyway. So, you know, better to kind of deal with such situation this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> well, it brings us to a couple of stories where we don't have people being sensitive, don't have people being sued. Um, well, this possible suit here, if we want to go to the Baptists, um, which. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go over to the Netherlands first, since we're talking about people's religious rights. And, okay, uh, that sounds good. I really didn't quite figure this out. The world poltergeist. Man, you get articles in the weirdest places, man. WorldPoultry.net, gateway to the global poultry industry. I Blame didn't the know real, there was, religious news service. So, I didn't know there was, um, you know, I didn't know about this website before, and I don't know if I'm going to care afterwards. But let's find out what's new in the gateway to the poultry industry. <laughs> so this is the parliament in the Netherlands, all right? Which I, I'm sorry, but the Netherlands is a wacky place. <laughs> <laughs> they just, you know, this is this is a place where you know, prostitution is legalized and marijuana is legalized, not just for medicinal purposes. And I mean, you know, it's just like, 
Yeah, if you want to see what Las Vegas is going to be like in 10 years, look at where the Netherlands is now. <laughs> right. Um, so for reasons of animal welfare, Parliament in the Netherlands is considering a ban on ritual slaughter without the prior use of anesthetics. All right. So they're specifically talking about the, um, the halal. Yeah. Halal, um, and kosher slaughtering. Um, most, Americans are probably more familiar with kosher, if anything. Um, and that is that the animals have to be slaughtered in a in particular way in order to be considered, um, you know, sort of pure or, or clean or, or kosher is the sort of term that most people are familiar with. And um, so that they can actually be eaten by Orthodox Jews or Muslims. Okay. And so this would say um, this involves poultry, sheep, goat and beef slaughtering because neither one of the groups eats pork. And so this isn't, I mean, understand this isn't talking about like, well, all those Satanists that are out there in the woods killing puppies, they need to use, you know, anesthetics first. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the Some scientists and veterinarians claim that animals slaughtered without prior anesthetizing will suffer from additional stress and pain. Um, and, uh, but they, according to those religions, it is, they would no longer be kosher or halal if, um, if you apply this anesthetic to the animal. And, uh, so then what would happen is that they would have to, um, it would basically shut down the whole, um, that whole industry in the Netherlands, they would have to move outside the country to neighboring countries, uh, perform the, the slaughtering there, and then import the food. Food fight! Um, I, now, not being Muslim or Jewish, uh, you know, I, I can't relate to this a whole lot, but this is definitely a religious rights thing where the rights of the animal, who's going to be killed anyway, um, is being taken over the um, the rights of the human being and their religious beliefs. So I, you know, if they suffer additional stress and pain, um, I, I'm not a big fan of causing pain and stress to you know to God's creatures. Understand that, um, you know, if if I kill a bug, I I do it quickly. Um, I, you know, he was... anesthetizes them first. <laughs> um, you know, I, one time I was out hunting when I was a kid and shot at a deer and kind of hit it in the rump he and missed got away. And, Cause he had mercy. He had mercy. He, he couldn't hurt, hit the deer. So he aimed away from it. I felt horrible. <laughs> it's, it still bugs me to this day that, that I hit that thing and it, it got away and, had to spend the rest of its life with a bullet in its butt. Um, but, you know, if, if I'd gotten a clean shot or even enough to, to knock it down so that I could take another shot to kill it, you know, that would have been all right. But I, I felt bad about leaving this animal to suffer. No, but on the other hand, in this particular case, you, 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 you know, you got a, you know, an issue here. Um, of, you know, it, if you do this way, then you're probably, you know, you, you could wind up, um, it would be not kosher. It, it, it's got to be done a certain way in order to fulfill the, the religious requirements. Therefore, you, you can't sit there and say, no, you can't fulfill your religious requirements. The reality is people do it anyway. They'll just be, it'll just be illegal. But you're not going to stop them from doing that. Well, or they'll do it outside the country. You know, right. it's it's not like the Jews are just in the Netherlands and the Muslims are just going to stop eating meat. They'll just right. import it. So, and just as uh, any man, just as many animals will suffer just mm -hmm. as much. But not in the Netherlands, they won't. <laughs> yeah, but we're not responsible for it. Okay, um, so this is a uh, last story. Um, speaking of keeping animals in cages um we have children in uh cribs and maybe this is kind of a good thing for anybody who actually who has a uh, children's room 
in your church. Right. And that's why I brought uh, this up. It's not just for Baptists. You know, it's, it's just that um, the um, U.S. Uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission um, outlawed drop side crips um, and requires stronger hardware and supports on the ones that uh, the type they will allow them. Um, that uh, they said there's just uh, how many children were they hurt? Were hurt uh, um, since 2000, so the last nine, ten years, uh, they blamed the deaths of 32 infants and toddlers and suspected another 14 fatalities. Uh, and then more than nine millions have been record recalled. Um, so they, um, you know, basically just outlawed them. The kind that. Everybody had that were great because you could lower the side and put your kid in without having to lower the, over, you know, reach over the. Now I don't know what the new ones are going to be. I don't know if they're going to be, you know, rigid okay. and you can't drop down the sides at all. In which case, of course, give it a few years and there'll be lawsuits because these parents have bad backs from bending over the the edge of the crib all the time. Yeah, that are they can't quite make it all the way to the to the mattress and they have to drop the kid. So there, there'll be a new lawsuit. Hang on, folks. Okay. Hang on for the rest. So so as somebody that sort of keeps up with this as a as a licensed foster parent that um, that is licensed for small children, um, we have to keep up with all this. Uh, first of all, I'm surprised there's any drop side cribs out there that haven't been recalled yet. Because, I mean, it's like every week there's new recalls. We, we watch them and, uh, to make sure that all the stuff that we have, you know, is, is safe. And, uh, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's a couple, three times a week, there'll be another batch of drop side cribs. So, so here's the deal. If you have a drop side crib, especially, you know, we're talking about churches, but it goes to say if you're a grandparent or, or a, a parent or whatever and you've got one of these things, all right, get rid of it. Um, or else contact the manufacturer. And a lot of times you can get like screws that go into it, um, that will prevent it, f the sides from dropping. It basically just becomes a, a solid crib. Um, now, or you can go to your local Home Depot and get, uh, screws to go into it that will take care of it too. Well, but they'll send you the right kind and, and with instructions and, you know, they'll send you like a little kit to make sure that it's done properly. Um, but, uh, there's, if, if you can afford it, cause they're a little more expensive, um, you can get cribs where instead of the whole side dropping, there's like a hinge halfway down and, um, and, and you pop a couple things and then that hinge will, it like folds down. Right. And um, as far as I know, those are still okay for the most part. And um, so, so yeah, if you if you really want to sort of uh, something where the side drops down and make it easier to put the kid in there, those work. They're not as convenient because it's a two handed thing. Um, and if you have a baby in your arms that's sleeping, yeah, forget about it. Um, but at, at the same time. Well, I mean, you know, you just have to remember when you get them out to make sure that you you drop it down to get them out so that it's down when you're ready to put them back in. But, um, I mean, if you consider that, uh, unless you're short, right, um, if they're, you can keep the mattress raised up enough until they start um, standing up or, you know, pulling up so that they could climb out, and then you can drop the mattress down. Um, for churches... Uh, hey, you know what? Not just your cribs, but take a look at all of your, your, your booster chairs, your high chairs, all that kind of stuff. All right. Go over to uh, cpsc.gov, Consumer Product Safety Commission. All right. And double check it and make sure that it's all up to date. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and because this, this stuff recalled all the time. And you want to make sure, and a lot of times it's, you know, here's the thing. If it's recalled, it's not going to cost you anything to replace it, all right? Unless the company's gone out of business. That happened to us once. But um, in general, you're, you're looking at, you, you contact the company. They either send you a kit to fix it um, so that it's within um, safety standards uh, or else they're going to replace it. And, um, and, and they'll do it for free because... If something happens, they can get sued, and uh, so mm -hmm. it's their duty to fix it. So, I mean, you don't want your church to get sued. I mean, no, and you do not want that. That's not a good thing. 
that. And not to mention the fact that you don't want the little babies in your in your church to get hurt. You know, I mean, money aside, right? That's even a worse thing. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, just something I think. To consider this not a news item. This has been a public service announcement of CrossFeed News. <laughs> Yeah, but hey. you know what? Kudos to the Baptists for actually pointing this out and mentioning it to their churches, right? Yep. Good idea. Yeah, it was good stuff. Um, <clears throat> moving on, uh, we got mail from our friend George. <clears throat> uh, he says, to Pastor Dale, it's more than just a hobby. It's a valid real ministry to a broken world that desperately needs to hear about God's love in Christ Jesus. Uh, the hobby was our podcast. I yeah. can remember. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay, I just think. Um, <clears throat> anyway, he says that on, uh, 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 he had one daughter recently became, was married. Congratulations, Anna, uh, on your, your, your marriage. Yep. Um, even if it wasn't April 1st, I, you know, <laughs> I just have fun with the wedding on April 1st. I just don't know why. Um, and then, um, he also said that uh, there, his uh, other daughter, Ruth, has been approved for uh, ordination um, following her one-year internship. Uh, well, obviously, George, we disagree on whether or not women should be ordained. But uh, regardless of that disagreement that we have, I do pray that your daughter will – God will work through your daughter and her ministry to touch many lives with Jesus' love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> one thing that that we need to understand as, as Missouri Synod Lutherans, that, uh, you know, even though we don't believe that – that that is um, God's intention for the ministry, all right? It doesn't change the fact that God can still work through those people and, and does um, to touch lives, to, to connect people with Jesus. And um, so there's, I sorry, can't deny that. So, and, and it's true. That's right. So, uh, uh, even, even though Dale probably wants to deny it, he can't. But that's <laughs> So yeah, and it, so in the, you know, in that sense, I wish her, you know, blessings that that God would use her, you know, for the saving of souls. So, um, yeah. Anything else? That's all I got. Uh, so, oh, yeah. um, that's all I have. Next week's Palm Sunday. The following week's Easter. I'm going to be pretty busy, so uh, I think we're going to take the next two weeks off. And uh, actually, the week after that, I'm going to have to take off, too, um, because I'm going to be busy with some other stuff. So, In yeah. other words, you will not be seeing us again for a month. Uh, some of you might want to just take that as an opportunity to relax and thank God, you know. and uh, Rejoice that, uh, and be glad. <laughs> that's right, you know. And you won't have to hear old Tails trying to sing again, either. Uh, so, you know, that is something to, to, to truly thank God for. Uh, in the meantime, have a joyous um, uh, Palm Sunday next Sunday. It's going to be extremely exciting at St. Luke's uh, and a joyous Easter celebration. And we will see you then early May. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless. Have a, just a tremendously blessed Easter. And, and remember that, and I'll, I'll say this in advance because I won't be able to talk to you on Easter. Uh, rejoice in the resurrection. <laughs>